Welcome back, friends, to the Bottom Shelf Project, where we plumb the depths of the most questionable liquors out there. We're looking at distilled liquors only, full-size bottles, 750 milliliters, at a price point of $19.99 or less. And today's offering is Cruzon Blackstrap Rum. And as you can tell, this bottle is not virgin, as opposed to some of our others. I've been experimenting with this because this is a rare beast. I've never had blackstrap rum before. I had plenty of silver rum. I've had uh, some really good aged rums, barrel aged rums from the Caribbean, but I've never had any blackstrap rum. And well, blackstrap refers to the fact that this is made from uh, blackstrap molasses. Well, uh, neither have I. So this is a first for me as well. Mm -hmm. Now, um, since I've already had some tasting on this, I, well, we're going to pour just a tiny bit of it neat. He's had some yes, tasting. Yes, I, I have. This is completely new to me, including the black strap, plus um, the brand, plus and in the, whatever. Some background information. Um, obviously, rum is uh, made from sugar cane. Uh, most of our local rums and a lot of the rums that you get from the Caribbean are made from sugar cane juice. They just take the, the canes... They look like long stalks of grass if you've never seen sugar cane. Press them down, extract the juice, and ferment that. It's very high in sugar content. Um, blackstrap molasses is extrapolated from that sugar cane juice. And uh, when I first hear molasses, my instinct is to think of bacon. Molasses is one of the primary ingredients of gingerbread. You, you, you use molasses cookies. in a lot of things. Oh, yeah, cookies, a lot of bread, a lot of things use molasses. Um, the shocking thing is, is when you are a kid, if you grew up as a kid with a mom that likes to bake, molasses is not like a teaspoonful of honey. No. I will glass, gladly take a teaspoonful of honey. You take a teaspoonful of blackstrap molasses, you hate yourself. You, you, it's not going to end well. No. So it's a very strong flavor. It's processed with, I believe, sulfur. Well, I mean, if you think about it, a, a tablespoon is about what you would use for three dozen cookies. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, so it's, it's an intense, dark, thick flavor. Um, oh, yeah. Without any further ado, I'm going to pour this out and get it a quick nosing. I'm, I'm, I'm being a bit stingy with it here because, it, like I said, just like its namesake, the black, black strap, it, it, it is pony. Is it going to whip me? Yeah, you, know, you think strap. <laughs> Don't make me go get a switch off the tree. I'll tell you what, I, it is not grapple. Oh, well, everything's uphill after that. <sighs> Ooh. It's a rich smell. It is. It, it's it, a really it, rich smell. It definitely smells like molasses. Yeah. I mean... It, it, it's it, reminiscent of baking spices. I need to... You can really get the molasses scent in there. Hmm. And again, it, it, it's slightly bitter, slightly acrid. The sweetness is behind it, but it's a very savory, almost, almost umami. It's almost like there's a little vanilla in the back of it, too. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I would agree with that. So. It's got good color. I mean, that is. Yeah, yeah. It's, 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 that, is, that is dark like my soul. <laughs> that, that is what that is right there. So. I, I was thinking like a really strong coffee, but I'll, I'll go with your answer. So. so let's give it a little tasting. All right. Mm. That's not good. You really like it? Oh yeah. That's it even tastes like really strong coffee to me. Which is I love coffee <laughs> and I love black coffee. And as I've said before, I, I'm not a big fan of coffee. This has a bitterness to it that's really oh. reminiscent of coffee. Man, that's good. It, uh, it's comparing it to other rums. The sweetness isn't quite It's there. not there. It's not anywhere near as sweet as a lot of rums. But, oh my goodness, is it rich? It is. There's a lot of depth to it. You got some bitterness. You got some sweetness. Yeah. You got, even got a little bit of smokiness. Mm -hmm. A little smoky. Um, There's a little bit of all of that in, in, in there. And uh, it does not have anywhere near the amount of sweetness as, like, say, a Myers or, oh, no. an, or another, like, a or, spice rum. Yeah, spice rum. Way different animal. Uh, uh, this... My only critique about this is it's a little thin in the mouthfeel. It's not as oily or rich as some. However, the flavor really hangs. It hangs out there on the palate. And it, it evolves well, as, as it goes along. I was going to say, the aftertaste 
and the lingering flavor, you really get the molasses. Oh yeah. That's where the molasses is really strong. That's where that's where it's getting its legs from, is that molasses. See now and again, cutting mm -hmm. over to uh, me experimenting with them, uh, experimenting with this. Um I tried to treat this like I did other rums, and I've had lots of rum. I've, I've yeah. had some good barrel aged sipping rums. I've had, and I still have some silver rums that I, I'm, I'm using right now. I picked up a couple bottles from a, a, a newly opened distillery in Tampa recently that mm -hmm. I'm gonna gonna expose you to. That they're all fantastic products, but they're so different from this that I can't really use this in the same way that I would a regular rum. What would you do with something like this? I feel like this is the kind of rum that you can really go crazy with. Um, that's strong enough that in the flavor that it's going to stand up to anything. And that was my experience because I tried mixing it with a lot of different fruits, like you typically would with, with a, any other silver rum, and it just screamed through. Mm. It, it would be like trying to make a mojito with tequila instead of rum. I, I think you could do like a Randy Alexander, but use the, this instead. Right, like ice cream. I think it's go really good in ice cream blended drinks. I think that's a really good one. I think it'd be really good in uh, rum cake. Oh man, would that be good in rum yeah, cake? I have not tried using this in baking yet, but that's actually, now that I think about it, that's a great idea. That would be so good in a rum cake. Rum balls, rum cake. You're making this into some uh, rum infused banana nut bread. Oh man. Now, and again, one of the reasons why that came to mind was is the most successful drink that I had made with this was taking some banana. I typically like my bananas with a little bit of green on them. Once they get darker, I don't eat them anymore. However, I took the bananas, put them in a cup, used an immersion blender to liquefy them and mix them with some other juices like blood orange and um, pineapple, put in uh, a jigger full of this rum, and then topped it off with crushed ice and a little bit of uh, ginger beer. And that turned, out, uh, that turned out well. It was nice and thick. It was very uh, daiquiri-esque, but with more body. Well, that's one of my grandfather's favorite drinks. Rum and ginger beer. Hmm. This might go really well with rum and ginger beer. Um, but, uh, talking about bananas, uh, banana foster. Yeah. Use that for your rum yeah. in the banana yeah. fosters. Um, give it a really nice depth to that flavor. That yeah, complete thought grenade, but uh, something that I was thinking of when I cracked this open for the first time when we were drinking it, because I thought this was a colored bottle. Not realizing how dark this room. Oh, it's is. yeah, it's it's dark. This, this is again, this is dark as as day old coffee. Um, mm. The stuff that's in the bottles and barrels in Pirates of the Caribbean. When he said, "Why is the rum going?" This is in my mind what he would have been drinking. Yeah, I can see that proper pirate rum. Proper pirate rum. Yeah, yeah. For, forget Captain Morgan. All that is that. That. No, this stuff right here. I'd more We're really at a loss because of the limited ingredients we have at hand. So the first thing we're going to try out is just poured over some uh, full geek cred ice. If you can't see it, these are D20 ice cubes, which uh, make my little nerd heart happy to no end. They're very fashionable. Just to see if I'm putting it over a little bit of ice, chilling it a bit, because rum, to me, is a, uh, an alcohol that goes really, really well chilled. It doesn't have to be a frozen slushy drink, but... Oh, it's so much sweeter. That's remarkable, it is. It is so much sweeter. It's almost like can molasses candy now. Yeah, give a, it, it's had a moment there to get a little bit of that water right. out of there. The sweetness is still there, but you lost a lot of the molasses after flavor. It, it's a little bit more acrid now. The richness is kind of... The sulfur flavor stands out. Mm. The sulfur really comes out in this. And I, I that's coming from memory because my great-grandmother, the well at her property was sulfur water, really strong sulfur water. And this is really reminiscent of that. Yeah, it's not so good now. Yeah. Yeah, that's not good. You want to mix it with a little cola? Uh, originally, we thought the cola wouldn't go well because... The cola has its own kind of bitter flavor to it, and this is bitter in its own right too, but we could still see. You, but the flavor profile's changed so much. Yeah. Now that it's cold, let's let's give it a shot. Sometimes two wrongs do make a uh, oh. Or two, yeah. You know, two lefts make a right. But sometimes, uh, you know, you hesitates is not just lost, but miles from the next exit. 
it doesn't change it a bit. It, it just still looks, looks, it just looks <laughs> like more. <laughs> <laughs> it did not get any different in color. And typically, when you put coal in something, it loses its nose. The coal over, shouts it over. But this, I don't know, that's standing toe to toe with that. It's almost, yeah, I think they're fighting for supremacy. I'm not sure who's going to win this one. I'd drink the shit out of that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you for this first genuine laugh of the day. All right, quick story time. Do you remember a few years ago, Coca-Cola came out with a new product called Coca-Cola Black, B-L-A-K? Yep. Coca-Cola Black was a limited release. It was Coke and coffee. Mm -hmm. That's what this tastes like. It's so good. Little outside of my comfort zone when it comes to flavors. Oh, it's so good. But I imagine this is what you feel like when you've had some of my smoky rums or smoky scotches. Yeah, you're more in my wheelhouse now. You're, yeah. you, you've stepped over to my wheelhouse. This is where I like to live. And this, this is so coffee-like. It's eerie because oh, so when I take a sip and then I exhale... That, that feeling on your tongue, that taste on your tongue. Because my that sense of taste... That bitterness? Yeah. yeah. My mm -hmm. sense of taste is stronger, much stronger than my sense of smell. So I can often taste things in the air when I can't smell them. And this is just like drinking coffee. Drink, like drink, well, it's drinking like... It's a little sweeter. Um, that co the cola mm -hmm. really makes it sweeter. The aftertaste. Yeah. Uh, this, this worked out far better than I thought it would. I thought those two flavors would crack, clash. Oh, they... They... They mingled and melded. That's not bad. I mean, again, it's not something that that fits my palate wheel perfectly, but it but, does mine. And and for someone who do, it doesn't fit perfectly, it still is not bad. It's not bad. I, I'm pleasantly surprised. How I I you know I, I am too. I really like this. I would. This might be not might be rum and coke of choice. This is really good. The, I've had this long enough. I don't know exactly what the price point was, but it was below the nineteen ninety nine. I think I think this is in the fifteen dollar range. I I'll just be honest. If you're looking to try something new, fifteen bucks, that is a hell of a bottle of rum. And I think I think it's gonna be one of those alcohols where you can really just think outside the box. Yeah. It's such got a, such a strong profile that you can just start really thinking, what can I do with this? Maybe I will put it in my coffee just to see what that comes out to be like. Um, I can think. I, think, I really think it'd go good with cooking, baking. Yeah, I was about to say. I think this would be the first liquor that gets the bottom shelf seal of approval for baking for your kitchen. Yeah. Because as we were talking, boy, I could really see this working well with some banana nut bread or banana nut muffins. There's a lot of different baking things. That so, oh, yeah. thank you. We just pointed out to us that it was on eighteen ninety nine. Um, I think I might have gotten it even cheaper because I picked this up at Total Wine. You can always get stuff cheaper at Total Wine. Those yeah. guys are baller. Back to the point. The Cruzon Estate Diamond Black Strap Rum. Man, I'm going to have to cook some. Um, I'm going to have to bake. I'm going to have to get in the kitchen now. <laughs> As you can tell, the final verdict is a, a resounding thumbs up. Uh, it's an odd bird, but given the right uses... This is the Tetris piece you need I will, to finish I, those last three rows. I will. I was telling Carrie earlier, um, and I think I'm. And I think I'm, I'm, I'll share this with you, with you guys out there. Uh, when I when I bartended at Benningans, uh, people are always trying to come up with something new. What you know? What what? Can we surprise me? So a lot of a lot of times, women didn't know what they wanted. They say surprise me. So I invented a drink. It's rum, but two ounces of rum, one ounce of banana liqueur, one ounce of chocolate liqueur. I prefer Godiva. Um, ice cream and milk or cream to, to loosen it up. Blend it. And that is deliciousness. And it's called? I call it the brother love. So. Knowledge. Uh, try it. I'm going to try it with that. I think it'd be really good. If you're feeling adventuresome, please do try it. Uh, I, I would wholeheartedly recommend it. Just like with the uh, horchata hot chocolate we made, which was also outstanding several episodes ago. But uh, again, the, the clearest sign of our endorsement is the fact that this is yet another proud edition of the Empty Glass Club. Of the Empty Glass Club. So friends, give it a try. And thanks for watching.